Hi everyone, how's it going? So yesterday I was looking at my stop stock profile and in case you don't know what stop stock is then it's basically a website where you can keep track of all of your coding profiles. So I was looking at my stop stock and I noticed that till date I have solved 1000 plus coding problems and all over different coding platforms including lead code. So I've solved problems on code forces, I've solved problems on code chef, I've solved problems on lead code. Pretty much any coding platform that you mention, I've solved at least a few problems on it. So I decided to share my coding journey with you guys today and decided to share what I did, what I could have done better and I'm going to tell you along the way what you should do, what not to do so that you can become a master problem solver. So let's get started. Turning back time to 2018, in May 2018 was the time when I started programming in first year of college so computer programming was the hype at that time everyone was doing computer programming so i decided to give it a shot on code forces so the first problem that i ever solved was this problem beer and big brother it was a pretty easy problem but it still took me a lot of time to think of a solution you can pause the video and think for a solution yourself it should not take you more than five minutes so this was the first problem that i solved and like that, I decided to solve some easy problems, level A, level B problems, and I decided to start computer programming. Now, let me tell you this right away, that if you're in first year, if you're in second year, and you want to do computer programming because you like it, then go ahead. But if you don't have time and you're preparing for placements, then computer programming is a bad idea for you. You can just stick to lead code. So only do computer programming in first or second year, or if you have a lot of time, don't do CP for placements at all. So I started solving problems in C++, which is a good thing that now that I look back on it, and this is what I will suggest to you also. If you are struggling with what programming language to choose, then go ahead and choose C++. C++ has a very strong library. It is also easy to learn comparatively, and you'll be using it a lot in problem solving. C++, according to me, is the best language for problem solving. So if you're confused, go ahead with C++. So I started solving basic problems. Then obviously people started to tell me that code forces is not the way to go and you have to solve problems on lead code. So I jumped on lead code and I started solving random problems, which was a big mistake that I made. So if you're solving problems and you're starting out, you should not do random solving. You should follow a sequence. You should do problems in an organized manner. Because there is a sequence, right? If you don't know recursion, you cannot solve three problems. Or if you don't know backtracking, you cannot solve dynamic programming problems. So there is a sequence that you have to follow. Basically, there's prerequisites for every data structure and every algorithm. So I started solving basic problems like two sum on lead code, but again, coming on harder topics like recursion or dynamic programming or graphs, I was getting stuck. So what I did was I decided to take everything one at a time, one step at a time. So I used to pick one data structure or one algorithm. Then I used to learn its theory completely. Then I used to learn its implementation correctly. And then I used to solve problems on it. And this is the way that you should do it. First, learn the theory. Be clear with the basic concepts of the data structure or the algorithm. Then implement it in code, whatever programming language you're using. Then solve problems. If you skip the first two steps, then you will not be able to solve the problems. So I started solving problems and there was a point where I was I would be stuck on a lot of problems and I remember there was a time when I would be stuck on a single problem for the whole day. And again, that's a big mistake. You should not do this. If you're starting out and you come across a problem and you're not able to figure out a way, you keep on getting TLE or you keep on getting wrong answer or you cannot even think of a solution, then don't give it more than half hour to one hour because there's a huge chance that the problem requires something that you don't even know of and you will not be able to invent it on your own. So don't waste time on this problem. Just go ahead and look at the discuss section. Don't go forward to the solution. Look at the discuss section and try to modify your approach or try to see someone else's approach and then code it on your own. A lot of times you'll find that someone in the discuss section has made a very easy technique or made a very easy way to solve the problem. And your approach was actually more difficult compared to the approach that you'll have in discuss section. A lot of times you'll see that you had like 100 lines of code and someone in the discuss section has done it in two lines of code. So in that case, discuss section is a lifesaver and you can learn a lot of new techniques and a lot of new tips from the discuss section of lead code. Now, one thing I'll tell you right now, 
whatever problem you were not able to solve, don't just forget about it. Take the problem and store it in a list somewhere. Either you can store it in an Excel form or in a Google Doc, but store all the problems that you couldn't solve in the first go in an Excel sheet and then you can revisit it after a month or after a couple of months of problem solving to see that whether you can do it now or now. So don't forget about the problem that you couldn't solve after learning at the after looking at the discuss section after looking at the solution then you can store the problem somewhere so that you can try to resolve it later on so i continue doing this i continue to solve a lot of problems and by some time i had solved almost all the easy and all the medium problems of linked list and stack queue like binary search tree array string basically each of the easy ones i had solved most of the easy ones i have solved most of the medium ones i have solved and at that time i felt a little confident like okay whenever a dsa problem comes i'm able to think of a solution i'm able to you know think of an approach to solve it but still i was having difficulty in solving harder topics like dynamic programming or graph or some recurs recursive hard problems so again what i did was i solved more and more problems and for the hard topics there is no work around for a topic like dynamic programming you have to solve more and more problems so what i did was i created a sheet of dynamic programming problems because i had the most trouble in dp so i had a sheet of 50 to 100 dynamic programming problems and i solved each one from the list and after solving a lot of dp problems i was able to understand whenever a problem used to come i was able to understand how i can use dynamic programming on it you know how i can make a formula or how i can make a pattern or something and use dp to solve it so after solving a lot of problems i noticed that a lot of problems are similar to one another if you solve one problem then 100% you will be able to solve more problems which are similar to that right so similar same thing is for dp if you solve a lot of dp problems then your brain will start getting the intuition so in case of harder topics the more problem you solve the better you will get so i suggest solving a lot of problems for topics that you have difficulty in for me it was dp for you it can be something else whatever is the most difficult topic you feel for you solve as many problems as you can you have to take the bull by its horn you cannot escape it you have to solve as many problems as you can and trust me after a while you become very confident in that topic so after doing this after solving a lot of problems i was able to successfully solve dp problems i was able to use dfs i was able to use bfs and i was able to solve even some of the hard problems not all the way but some of the hard problems i was able to at least think of an approach and think of a way on how to solve it now the last thing that i felt after learning everything was that i was still lacking in one thing even after learning everything i was still lacking in one thing which kept holding me back even in placements even in interviews and that is the speed of problem solving now imagine this suppose there is a coding round and there's five problems in that coding round and there's a hundred different students and all of them solve all the five problems so who is the company going to select the company won't be able to select all the students so they will select the students according to their time like who took the least amount of time to solve the problem so the timing matters a lot suppose two students are there one is solving a problem taking a whole day one is solving a problem taking half an hour so this student is obviously better even if both were able to come up with a solution so your speed matters a lot so how can you improve speed of problem solving so the best way to improve speed of problem solving is to give contest okay there's nothing better than that you have to give contest now after learning everything i suggest you can give contest after learning everything or you can even give contest before if you have time and there's a lot of different coding websites you can give a uh, contest on code forces code forces is actually a very good website if you want to improve your problem solving skills it may not be relevant for placements but it will still improve your problem solving skills so you can give contest on code forces you can give contest on code chef and obviously the best coding pro the best coding platform you can give contest on lead code and you can even give contest on geeks or geeks as well once you give a contest right you'll come in that state of mind you see the time like you know decreasing you see the clock ticking you see the rank list being displaced and you will come in that form you know because it emulates that competitive nature so it will automatically increase your speed of problem solving so you can either take contest or you can give yourself a timer for solving problem you know that i have to solve this problem within 45 minutes and that is the only way that you can improve the speed of problem solving and once you do this it will improve your speed 
and it will also improve your accuracy as well. Now, after doing all of this, after solving a lot of problems, after giving a lot of contests and after solving even company-wise problems, the last thing I did was apply to a lot of companies. Now, even if you're not looking for a placement right away, or even if you feel you're not confident enough to get placed in your top companies, still just start applying. You never know where you stand until you actually sit in the interview or until you actually sit in the coding round, you know, whatever it may be. So start applying. As soon as you feel like you are confident enough in solving problems, start applying. Don't hold yourself back. Don't care about getting rejected. Just start applying, start applying. And sooner than later, you will find yourself in your dream company. So that's pretty much it. That was my coding journey. Hopefully I was able to mention a few points that will help you get improve in your coding journey and get to the point where you want to be. So that's pretty much it. In case you have any doubts or you want to reach out, then leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thank you.